Welcome to the third annual Global Heat Flow Day. This video will provide an introduction to the quality standards of the International Heat Flow Commission's Global Heat Flow Database. The quality standards of the Global Heat Flow Database were defined in 2023 through the work of more than 30 heat flow scientists. Along with a new structure for the heat flow database, this international project established a new quality assurance procedure for heat flow data. The new structure and quality standards bring this valuable global resource into the modern digital era and make the data more accessible and usable for a variety of heat flow related applications. So why are quality standards for the global heat flow database required? First of all, heat flow data have been compiled into a coherent collection since 1954. Over the years, various people and groups have made improvements to the collection, with the latest update in 2023. However, Jessup et al. in 1976 were the first to provide a data quality evaluation scheme, which was based on the structure and compilation of the world heat flow data collection available at that time. In their contribution, Jessup et al. proposed that individual users should make their own quality judgment based on the information available for each location. The term consistency was used as the quality parameter. Consistency was particularly suited for shallow marine temperature probe measurements, but it was also applied to other heat flow data. Based on temperature probe data of the Lamont-Doherty Geological Observatory, Consistency was classified using a five-level rating scale, A to E, based on the estimation of vertical variability, probe tilt, and uncertainty in the conductivity measurement. A rating of A was defined as having heat flow variation of less than 10%, while B had a variation of 10 to 20%, and C had over 20% variation. A rating of D indicated that the probe tilt was not determined, and E meant that the variation was indeterminable. Although this quality scheme provided some information on the accuracy of the heat flow value itself, it did not provide detailed information on the reliability of the final values, nor did it give information on the applied technologies. Jessup et al. acknowledged that poor measurement techniques, lack of environmental corrections, and other factors imposed limitations on the applicability of their quality scheme. Luca Zou, in 2019, took advantage of this classification in his version of the Global Heat Flow Database, which improved application of the evaluation for both probe sensing and borehole data. He used five classes depending on the variation of heat flow with depth. Class A is defined as very good, with a variation of less than 10%, while class B is good, with a variation of less than 20%, and class C is average, with a variation of less than 30%. Class D indicates that the data should not be used in heat flow maps, as the variation is greater than 30%, and class Z indicates that the variation has not been specified. In addition, we know that even a technically perfectly executed heat flow determination can be impacted by overriding local effects, such as heat refraction from tectonic structures. Therefore, to properly evaluate the quality of heat flow data, which is a derived measure calculated from temperature gradients and assumed representative thermal conductivities, it is critical to systematically consider the context of the measurement and the specific location that is being studied. In the following slides, we show you how this systematic assessment is implemented in the heat flow database. As you see here, the quality scheme is made up of three parts, an uncertainty score, U, a methodology score, M, and a consideration of perturbation effects, which are stored in the database as flags. The three different scores represent different quality aspects, numerical uncertainty of the input data, reliability of the technical measurement methods, 
and assessment of the local site conditions. When you put all three steps together, a combined quality score is produced which provides a lot of information in a very compact format. This quality scheme and the scores provide a basic evaluation for initial understanding of the data in the heat flow database to facilitate its use for heat flow related research and applications. The first step in determining the quality of a heat flow value is based on calculation of the uncertainty in the value. This uncertainty is computed as the relative coefficient of variation of the heat flow data uncertainty, which is based on full error propagation of the thermal conductivity and temperature gradient measurements. The coefficient of variation is used to determine the class of the U-score, with U1 being the best score with the lowest variation and the worst score of UX being assigned when the variation cannot be determined. This numerical uncertainty quantification applies to all child elements in the database. The second step requires assignment of a quality score to the temperature gradient and conductivity measurement methods. The M score reflects the methodological accuracy and the technical reliability of the measurements. The M score is classified based on a quality score, which in turn is a product of a scoring of temperature and conductivity methodologies. The highest score is attributed to the best quality methodological approach, while methodological weaknesses result in subsequent penalties. There are different scoring schemes for borehole and mine data and for probe sensing data. You will see an example for borehole and mine data in the next slide. The categories and associated penalties for the temperature and conductivity score computations are shown on the left side of this slide. Note that the penalties for some of the methods are positive, which improve the score above 1.0. On the right, the matrix of M scores from the computed temperature and conductivity quality scores is displayed. The top matrix shows the numerical quality scores while the lower matrix shows the equivalent M scores for each numerical quality score. A similar calculation and sorting scheme is applied to probe sensing data. As before, the penalty can actually be positive for some methods, and the eventual M scores for each temperature conductivity score combination are shown in the lower right. The third step considers potential perturbing effects independent of technical uncertainties and methodological reliability. Seven different perturbing effects are considered for the P-flags. Sedimentation, erosion, topography or bathymetry, paleoclimatic effects, surface temperature variations, convection or fluid flow dynamics, and heat refraction. For each effect, a capital or lowercase letter is assigned, which indicates whether the effect is considered or known to have an impact on the heat flow, and whether the effect is corrected for or not. Finally, all three scores are combined to generate the overall IHFC quality score. The evaluation is performed on the child level. The scores from all relevant child entries, in other words, from every different heat flow measurement are used to compute the quality score for the parent element. We take the conservative approach and assign the worst quality scores to the parent. The parent score is thereby inherited from the poorest child information. In order to assign quality scores for each heat flow value in the database, all parameters which provide relevant information for the quality scheme are defined as mandatory in the database. You can see the mandatory elements in red here. In this slide, we see 10 sample child database entries displaying a variety of methods and availability of data for corrections. Note that samples F and G 
only have one child per location, but the rest of the locations have multiple children from which a single parent value must be selected. And here are the quality determinations for the 10 different child entries. The uncertainty score is at the top and ranges from the best score of U1 to the OK score of U3. The methodological score is in the middle. You can see how the temperature and conductivity scores combine for the final M score. And below, you can see how the poorest U and M scores are moved to the parent level. Also shown are examples of correction for the seven perturbation effects. The sample with the most corrections has five flags, while some samples have no effect information at all. Most samples include corrections for only two or three effects. So in summary, the IHFC Global Heat Flow Database considers, for the first time, a combination of factors to arrive at an overall quality rating for a specific location. The additional data and metadata fields contained in the 2023 database structure provide the information required to assess uncertainty in the measurements, the accuracy of the data collection methodology, and the impacts of local perturbing effects on heat flow measurements. As shown, there are different quality schemes for borehole, mine, and probe sensing data. Once you are familiar with the quality scheme and its application, all these factors allow for rapid understanding of data quality, which facilitates more effective search and use of heat flow data. Thank you for watching this video. We hope it provides helpful information to you for a better understanding and use of the heat flow database.